All right, what I have for you is something wonderful. God gave this to me. Amen. And that is, it's a truth about series, but today is the truth about our tongue. Uh-oh. Now, I, I believe that there's a lot of things that we could learn about ourselves. For example, let me just talk to you for a minute. How many's ever suffered with the isms? Like, for example, when somebody's trying to tell you something, you interrupt ism. How about somebody's trying to tell you something and you finish their conversation? Finish conversationism. These are things that I suffer with. Amen. How about somebody, you know, you ask somebody how their day is going, huh? And they walk off on you. <laughs> Before you can get the answer. These are isms or human nature and human habits. And so one of the things I'm going to give you today is the cure for human habits that kind of annoy you about yourself. Someone say amen. <laughs> of course, none of us get annoyed about ourselves, do we? Huh? Amen. I always get annoyed about myself when my eyes slip down on myself and I go, and I hear myself saying negative things. Well, good morning to you. Welcome to this briefing. I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to go and we're going to talk about the tongue, how to use it properly. We're going to do it in a positive manner, although I will read some things to give us a, a kind of warning. But our tongue can be used in a positive manner. For example, I'll give you a prelude. How did you get saved? Well, you believed in your heart. You heard the, the word and you maybe heard an altar call or you read a track or somebody shared with you and you decided you wanted Jesus Christ. You heard the word and you believed in your heart the Lord Jesus that he exists and you confessed with your mouth. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So listen, the simple words of your heart you brought God into your life. Now, if words weren't that powerful, then why did God choose to use that means for us to get saved? Now, think about it. So maybe Satan couldn't stop you from getting born again. That's what saved is, getting born again. But he can fill your mind and your lips with negative talking Negative thinking and negative speaking, which will slow down your growth in half. Hello? How many here would like to grow? You planted a garden, you want your garden to grow. You don't want to look out there at some scraggly little plant. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God you're not a scraggly plant. <laughs> Come on, have fun with me a little. Amen. Those working all right, Mike? You can let him know later. All right, follow along with me. Now, J Pastor James said that our tongue can be an unruly member. Everyone say member. member. All right, now look at your hands for a minute. This is also in the Bible called a member. Your eyes, they're called a member of your body. Your ears, they're a member of your body. And it's amazing it calls our tongue a member of our body. So James, Pastor James, remember he was a pastor at Jerusalem. In the book of James, he says that our tongue is a little member, but it boasted great things. It sets the course of our life. The words that we use, now listen, tell a message or paints a picture of communication to another one. Think about what communication is about. If I was going to share what I think uh, is this idea with Peggy, then I need to describe it so she can understand it. Can you say amen? Have you ever had somebody try to explain something to you and when they were done, you had this big question mark? The way to speak is to speak the truth in love. Can you say amen? The fastest way between the truth and getting the results is a straight line, a pure truth. Some people get in trouble for speaking the truth. I'm one of those, I'm a leader, so I don't mince words. If I say this, I mean that. And if I say do this, I mean that. I mean as a human. Now do you think God's any different? 
If he tells you something, is he wasting his time and just making mention of words? So now that I got our attention, we got saved and changed the course of our life by believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth. Let me say this to you before we go on. You can continually change the course of your life by the volume of the words you use. Now, if there was a way that you could record your voice throughout the day, you'll find out there's a certain amount of that. It's real positive, really agreement with the Bible. A certain amount of your words are negative. They put things down, or maybe you mention somebody else in a negative way. I'm just talking generally. Now, the accumulation of that conversations, positive and negative, is what you'll be at the end of the day. Most people don't know that. That's why Satan tries to sell us on a bag of goods, by getting our eyes off of God and putting them on ourselves. Then when we do something negative, negative, we usually talk about it. Don't. If nobody else seen you do a boo-boo, don't tell yourself about it. <laughs> Man, that really is not good. You can say something like that. Or, wow, that hurt when I whacked my finger. But don't go on and on and on and then think, what did I whack my finger? You see? So I, what I'm doing is I'm setting you up for what I want to carry through. Now, we need to speak the truth in love. We need to mean what we say and say what we mean. Everyone say amen. amen. All right. God dwells in our born-again spirit when we got born again. So we need to learn to speak out from him. We can speak our mind. <laughs> God knows. God forbid sometimes. Or we can speak out from our flesh. For me. I'm crying and dying and going somewhere. What do you get when you play country music? I love country music, by the way. You get your car back, your wife back, your dog back. <laughs> Crying, dying, going somewhere. So the whole idea is Satan is filled. He can't maybe stop us from getting born again, but he fills the atmosphere and our social exchange of words and actions totally in a negative fashion. That's why it's a sort of a drug. That's why God's scenario, God's words are so important that we stay in it. Why? Because the entrance of God's word gives us enlightenment. It opens our eyes. It helps take the scales off of us. Helps us order our... Can you say amen? And then for us to speak in line with that, you're on your way, Jose. But to speak against yourself, it's called being contrary to yourself or double-mindedness. But most folks don't know what a double mind. Here's what they think. If you're double minded, you're thinking, well, I believe this way, but my, my mind doubts. No, let me put it better so you can understand it. From your spirit, everyone say, from my born again spirit, I cannot doubt. I cannot get angry. I cannot sin because Christ is in there. And my spirit and his spirit are one. So when you get angry, when you get frustrated, it comes off the top of your head and your flesh. I want you to get this. Okay? If, can God sin? Doesn't he live in you? So if you let him take control of your walk, you're not going to sin much either. Until you get into your mind and get into your flesh. Here, let me show you. Satan has a way. Once you start learning to walk with the Lord, great victories happen. Things come together and you go, wow, this is great. And immediately Satan says, yeah, let's get on the flesh about it. Let's get all and let's start talking all the negative stuff. Or if he can't get you to do that, he'll send somebody. A relative, a friend. I remember one time I had some of the greatest prayer was going on. And I was just praying. I, I had taking care of things and I'm hearing from God and everything and the phone rings I love telling this little story because it helps us understand and I kept ringing and ringing and I'm thinking I'm going to ignore this I remember, just kept ringing 
So I thought, well, God, you know, hold on. I answer the phone. And the guy says, brother. Now, there's nobody here, so don't worry about it. I said, yeah. He says, God told me to call you. <laughs> he did. Do you think he did? So sometimes the enemy can use other people, unaware of them. They're not bad. Just can use other people to get in the way. Like Saturday night when you're supposed to be getting rest, preparing yourself to hear from God and everything in the world. Your brother calls. Then somebody says, come on, let's go out for coffee. And it goes forever. Come on, you need to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. We're talking about your walk. My job is to see that you become a champion that God designed you to be. And I'm going to give you as best amount of material that I can give you. But then you and God have to sort that out and work out your own salvation with fear and tremble. And someone say amen. amen. Now, let's get in some of this good stuff. Okay. Each of us, we're given different results. If we listen to our spirit, we're going to get results. Resu we listen to our mind sometimes. We're not going to get the best results. And if we listen to our flesh, well, you know. <laughs> Have another piece of pie. You know, whatever. All right, so my first point I would like to make is Proverbs 17, please. Go to Proverbs 17. We're going to look at two verses, 27 and 28. Again, I'm using scripture. I want to speak to you by scripture or in line with scripture always. Because Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall Set you free. The reason, let me break it down. To know the truth means you know it and have been experiencing the truth. See, to know means to know by experiencing the truth. You know how to walk. And you learn how to walk by experiencing the truth. Amen? One foot in front of the other when you were a little teeny kid. And if you ever lost, like I did, lose a foot or something, you have to kind of relearn to walk again with some instruments and some other worldly members like a, a false foot. But anyway, let's go out. You got it? So Proverbs 17, 27 says, he who has knowledge, listen, spares his words. Use them sparely. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Even a fool, I love this. <clears throat> My dad used to tell me this differently. Even a fool's counted wise when he holds his peace and when he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive. My dad says, son, when we're at this house, please, this is my boss. I want you to be still, be happy, but don't say a word. I'd rather them think you smart than have you open your mouth and remove all doubt. Now, he was kidding with me. But this is my dad. My dad and I were friends. We somehow, through the life, we became very close, very fr close friends. In fact, I led my father very humbly to the Lord. Right in front of my mom, and she's screaming, don't hurt him, don't hurt him. But let's go right on. So again, it says, even a fool. Now you might say, well, what is a fool? Description of a fool in Bible simply means somebody that refuses to learn. Okay? It includes somebody who can't learn, like somebody that's mentally challenged. But it also includes people that refuse to want to listen. Proverbs 1 talks about wisdom cries out, but those that don't want to listen, God will laugh at their calamity. And when their trouble comes, he will mock them because they refuse to listen to him trying to help them. Read Proverbs. And you go, well, I thought God wasn't that way. No, he's not that way, but the devil is. And if God is not working on your behalf, who are you in the open field with? Split toe, boogaloo, Klingon. I have a few names for them. <laughs> Amen. The devil. All right, so let's go on. Proverbs 16, listen to this one. Proverbs 16, 23 and 24 says, The heart of a wise teacher, the heart of a wise teacher spares his words. Hello, 
The heart of a wise teacher, his truth, and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. So there's a way that you can speak to bring healthier outcome. I think some of you are picking up on that already. All right. Okay, my first point. You might want, if you're taking notes, write this down. Two fountains. You have two fountains. Huh? You mean an ice cream fountain and a soda fountain? No. I'm talking about a fountain that comes out of your old man and a fountain that comes out of your new man. Let me explain. When you got born again, who came to live inside of your spirit? The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit in the form of Christ, right? And he came in like a seed. And as we operate in faith and we act on the word, the seed, which is perfect, develops and grows. It's complete in there, but it's underdeveloped. How many ever, and I'm going to use this as an illustration. How many know some people are really developed in certain things and other things are not? Like, for example, let me use one that's well known. I, Albert Einstein. Phenomenal. Wisdom and all. Couldn't relate to people. Had no social skills. <laughs> How does that happen? By what we're exposed to. So if we let God run our life, he exposes us to all the things that we need to become who he wants us to be so that we can be totally complete and satisfied in him. Someone say, that's for me. So, listen to this. There's two fountains. So we're going to go to Pastor James' book, the book of James. We're going to look at verse, uh, uh, chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Now, he's going to talk about two fountains. Now, how many have ever been to the ocean? Anybody here ever tried surfing besides me? How about body surfing where you just use your body and you go on some of the waves? I did that in Malibu, California. Now listen, what people didn't tell me is don't swallow the water. Because it's what kind of water? And it'll make you throw up. Violently ill throwing up. Okay? So there's a little clue I want to catch you. It's salt water. Okay, you ready? Third chapter, verse 11 and 12, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? What's the answer? No, not the same opening. The same person. <laughs> you have two fountains. You have a flesh fountain. You have a spirit fountain. Spirit fountain has God in it. God speaks out. That's why when you pray from your heart out of, the, out of God, every prayer is answered. Because God cannot be denied. But when you pray from yourself, you know it's kind of iffy. So you have to pray in agreement with the word rather than what you think the word ought to say. Are you with me? Two fountains. Does a spring bring forth fresh and bitter water? No. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? What's the answer? No. Or a grapevine bear figs? What's the answer? Okay, listen. Thus, no spring yields both bitter and our salt water and fresh. But we do. We do. He's going to go down later on and explain. We do. How many ever got upset? And the first wise thing you did when you were really upset is you grabbed a hold of your lips and walked away and didn't say anything, right? Amen. Because we know that if we don't walk away and if we engage in arguments, listen, we're going to let bitter water out. Okay? Now, I'm not saying one little argument is going to ruin your day, but I'm saying some people, one little argument will ruin their day. Some people, somebody says something bad to you. Your whole day is ruined. Why? Because you're dwelling on yourself. Why did they say that to me? And bitter water starts oozing out of you because it comes from the flesh. 
But did you know that your spirit man cannot sin? Did you know your spirit man cannot hate? Did you know your spirit man cannot make a mistake? So that's why Paul said, walk in the spirit. Now that brings us up to a very important thing. How? Lord, teach me. Right? What our pastor did is he got us in the car and he says, now, you pray and you hear from God and tell me where you want to drive. And we would go through excursions being led of the Spirit. God led us into Fort Lewis, made us invisible several times, get us to claim property where churches are now built, did all those kind of things. Now, I want to ask, I want to ask or make this statement. We didn't have any idea what he was doing. But I know now what he was doing. He was teaching us to hear his voice and a voice of a stranger not to follow. You and I were raised all our life with voices of strangers. Stranger danger. Everybody trying to tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And yet, now we're saved. Where do we get our instructions from? We get it from God and from Scripture. Can you say amen? And we get it easily from the New Testament, not from the Old Testament, because the Old Testament points to Christ, and you and I have Christ. So if the Old Testament points to Christ, and if we go back to the Old Testament just to learn from that alone, we're going to fall from grace, according to Galatians chapter 3. Grace comes through Jesus Christ. Truth comes through Jesus Christ. And if we try to be good without God helping us be good, you're going to fall short and bitter water is going to come out of you. And that's why many Christians today are bitter because they started off in the spirit, but something happened, either a pretty woman or money or some kind of tra entrapment comes from the enemy. And they didn't know it, and they start flirting with that. And next thing you know, God's here, and they're somewhere out over there. And they don't know that they've left God and what God wants in their life. And they're out doing every routine that they can because they're important. Now, I can tell you as a pastor, Satan set me up that way. And he set me that up because it's easy to get your eyes off of the Lord and on to all that the Lord is doing. Don't do that. Somebody hands you a million bucks. Don't get excited over it before talking to God first. Hello? Because Satan was going to take it right from you. Anything that puts you over in prosperity, you better keep the devil bound because he's coming for it. You get that prosperity check in and all of a sudden everybody needs money. Isn't that amazing? Satan doesn't want us to be able to give to the gospel, to give to the good things as directed by the spirit. He wants all the needy people to come take it from you. Suddenly there's a bill that showed up. You didn't know where it happened. Folks, how many's ever known somebody that won the lotto? I have. And lost everything here in about a year. You see, if you don't change your thinking, now listen to me carefully. If we don't change our thinking about things, the same flaws will follow us into our Christianity. You don't want that. Ask God to teach you. If you're one of those people that God raises up to produce money, produce work, do those kind of things, guard that. Keep yourself in prayer because you you become now influential. Instead of just a person, you own properties. You have businesses. So you better guard those things and keep them in the hands of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Do you think I have to do that with this work here? You bet. You bet. Man, you know, the little snarling devil, I love to kick him. All right, so let's go on. All right, now. Go with me, please, to Matthew chapter 12. You found out that there's two fountains. What are they, tell me? Fountain of the flesh and fountain of the spirit. spirit. Amen. Which one are you speaking from? Spirit. All right. That's, your, that's your, your strength with God. That's your commitment to God. All right. All right. A couple of points as you go to Matthew 12. We have two fountains. Shut the one down. Matthew 12, please. 33. 37. We must learn how to release sweet water. Folks, it isn't until recently 
God began to show me how to control what I'm talking to you about. Not the tongue per se, but sometimes we, we think. You remember I shared about the isms? Sometimes I think people just need my opinion. <laughs> Opinionism. Let me just share this with you. If you're like me and you're a minister, don't butt yourself into somebody's discussion. Can you say amen? Don't add your two cents. Hello? And don't minister to people if they've never asked you to. People do that. Oh, God's got a word for you. Let me, I'm going to give that word. Did God tell you to do that? And did they want that word? Are you forcing your beautiful, charismatic self upon the innocent? Hello. All right, so I made enough fun. So listen, thirdly, remember Jesus said, either make the tree good or make the, or let the tree be bad. We are known by the fruit we bear, right? So guess what? You have two things. You are fully good and your flesh is fully corrupted. You don't believe me? Stop from getting old. <laughs> Hello. Now, God wants us to not believe for sickness, believe for diseases, okay? But one thing I found out, and I, we can get healthier and healthier, and God wants us to do that. But I found out I can't slow down the aging process. Although my mind is young. I have a young mind, but my body is not cooperating. <laughs> Come on, laugh. We can laugh at ourselves a little bit. So here's how we begin to direct our course. So listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 12. Remember, he hadn't died and hadn't rose again yet. So he's still ministering under the old covenant. So he says, speaking from your heart produces results. Either make, in verse 33, Matthew 12, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers. Now he's talking to the Pharisees and the religious people who did not like Jesus. So he's calling them brood of vipers. You're speaking ass words. How can you being evil, he says, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I have a way to say it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth slippeth. Some people say, it's a Freudian slip. About four weeks ago, I had one of those. Right there in the sermon and everything. Thank God for forgiveness. Can you say amen? amen. Now let's go on. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's, what do you have abundance in your heart? Your heart's both your mind and your spirit. Your heart's both your mind and your spirit. So what have you been dwelling on is what's going to come out of your mouth. For example, sometimes I will let my eyes slip down upon the church. And I'll see that the church has needs and all that. And if I dwell on it any length of time, next thing I do, when I see my wife, what comes out? Hi, honey. Boy, this thing here over at the church needs to get straightened up. Out of the abundance of what you meditate on. Leaks out of here. Now, how many here would like to have the control of the leaks? Amen. You can. The Holy Spirit's there to help you. And so I find myself after a while not saying what I normally would say. Hello? Not making comment about things I normally would make comment about. But sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> Do you love me? I love you too. Let's go on. Read along with me. Okay. He says, he calls him brood of vipers. He says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings evil things. Let me just say it this way. A saved man or woman brings forth godly things. And an unsaved man or woman brings forth ungodly things. We have a, a picture, a, a flash picture in Galatians chapter 5, of what the flesh can do. It calls it, does, it calls it fruit of the spirit. That's from our spirit. And then it calls the flesh the works of the flesh. See, it's always that way through the scripture. Flesh wants to work and impress people. The spirit wants to love God and let God impress people. See the difference? Sure. 
You work hard because you like things nice. Wonderful. You bring God in there and he'll show you how to even do it better with less time. That's wonderful. But to go out there and say, yeah, the pastor wants me to get the weeds out of his garden. Man, I tell you, what's he been doing all this time? You see negative water coming out. Nobody asked for your opinion. Why are you commenting like that? I don't know. Have it. Bad habits Satan gave you a long time ago. Don't you look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys okay? All right, so let's go on. He says, all right, he brings forth the evil thing. Verse 36, but I say unto you, for every idle, non-productive word that man shall speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you are what? Justified, Justified by your words are condemned. That's what I want to show you. If you're speaking throughout the day, throughout your life, is according to the word, you're going to be benefited beyond your wildest dreams. But if you have a combination of talking about Jesus, getting upset, and talking about the things there, and you're up one minute, and you're talking down yourself the next minute, you are double-minded, and you can't receive anything from the Lord. Satan's got you. Checkmate. But you're not there permanently. You can get out. Just get your eyes off yourself. I'm just stupid. I never get anything right. Shut up. We know you're stupid. Don't run around and claim it. You see how funny that really is? And we don't know we're doing it. I mean, I used to have a problem when I was a kid. My flesh was bad. I was a spoiled, rotten little brat. And there was this fire engine when I was a kid. And I wanted that fire engine so bad for Christmas. I was throwing fit and everything, and we drove by the gas station of the Chevron that had the fire. And I was I, I screaming and yelling. My dad had already planned to buy it for me for Christmas and was putting it in the trunk, and I was making such a, a mess and such a fit about it. He says, all right, then he went and took it out and gave it to me. And I didn't have any joy with that fire engine because I got in the flesh about it. Now, I didn't know anything about that, but you sure can learn what the flesh is like by watching some little snot, snotty-nosed kid whose mom says, oh, my kid's an angel. <laughs> All right, let's move right along. We're to speak faith-filled words, folks. Do you believe that? Without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. Amen? Faith is the substance of things so for the evidence of things not seen. And by faith, the elders have a good report. That's you. Now listen to this. Romans 10. The question is asked from the Pharisees. Listen. How come you Gentiles, non-Jewish religious folk, are speaking this faith stuff? Now watch. But the righteousness of faith, this is verse 6 of Romans 10. You got it? But the righteousness of faith speaks this way. God in you speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Why is that in there? Because there's some people saying, God, send your pile, your power. God, send your revival. And we mean well. But that's like saying, Jesus, bring it down from heaven. Didn't he do that 2,000 years ago? You see how religious we can be? God, bring revival. And God says, I need you to pay attention to me then. Because you're the one that's slowing it down. <laughs> I'm going to pause. God is so good. He's, he's the one who kind of put that in there. We slow it down. God, God is waiting on us. But we have a scripture that says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like eagles with wings of great length. So we hear the word, wait on the Lord. You know, God is waiting on you to get with the program with him. And the word waiting there, did you know what that word wait means? How many of you have ever had a wonderful meal and had a waiter came to your table? 
That's what the word wait there. It doesn't mean sit, do nothing. It means serve the Lord. If you haven't got any specific directions, just be diligent, serve the Lord, and enjoy God. Then God, when he wants you, he'll get your attention and guide you. Meanwhile, you're caught up in God. Say amen. Or the other. God forbid. So the righteousness in us, by God, we speak in faith. So it also says, who will ascend into the abyss? That is, bring Christ up, folks. Catholicism. I love Catholicism. But they have Jesus still on the cross. You pray people out of purgatory. Purgatory is another name for paradise. Except for it comes out of the Maccabees. You know, I don't want to go off in there. But basically is they were told that they could pray their, their lost, ungodly relatives out of hell if they pray hard enough. No way. Pointed unto man to die once, and that's it. No cummy backy. No pass coal. So what we do with our life now is pointed unto man to live once. Then judgment. So we need to get with God, fulfill our life, and touch lives, and then get out of here. Don't camp here too much. Hello, it floods here. There's fires, famines, and some turkey has started some kind of pandemic. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My home is laid up way beyond the blue. The angels beckon me through heaven's open door. And I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't know why I break forth in song. I guess I got a song in my heart. I got a jig in my step. And I have Jesus on my brain. I'm a scripture quoting sin to face and devil chase and overcoming child of God and so are you so let's go on with this so it says who will bring him up from the abyss but this is what we are supposed to say he says the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ everyone say Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, say, I do, I do. you're saved. Amen. Okay? For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession brings salvation. So, what I'm trying to say is that confession unto salvation, the word salvation is a wonderful Greek word, which means saved, healed, made whole, preserved, and made Totally sound and solid. That means you're not a flake. Can you say amen? Flopping all around and being such a bad testimony. If that's still happening, you better get in with God. Now, I knew somebody that was really fighting God. They only had the religious form of God, and they would argue with their husband, and they'd do this, and they always got their eye. And one day, God says, I want to hear from you. And they got down on their face, and they gave it all to God, and they broke. That person's changed. And you might be sitting here today, and you need a break. You need to be crushed so that old nasty seed can get out of the way, and God can make you the way you're supposed to be. Hello, I don't care what you did in 1916. It has no relevance to the day today. I'm going to preach myself happy. Let's move right on. Now listen. It says, For with the heart we believe unto righteousness and mouth confess in salvation. For there is no distinction now in God's eyes between male and female, bond or free, Jew or Gentile, black or white. You know, I had some people say to me one time, they were, they were bikers for Jesus. And I did something. I, I made a special parking spot for them in my huge church down in Pacific and Algona. It was huge. I had two giant warehouses. You could put four of these in each one of them. Okay? And it was huge. Now, God's got me in my retirement just training people now. I don't want a huge church. 
I want to see that you make it and you do a great job. And, and if you get rich, hey, I'll drive your limo. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'll wash your feet and drive your limo. I don't have a problem. You see, because my pride's dead. I try to crucify it every day. I wear a smile on my face whether I feel it or not. Because other people are looking at me. Worst thing you can do as a preacher is you can be up and down, up and down. Because people see the down. They don't see the up. How many has ever noticed that that beautiful fence you just bought, somebody broke a little piece off of it? And when you look at that fence, what do you notice? The little broken piece. So listen, broken pieces. Get into Christ. Get into prayer. Get into the right things. And watch how you speak. Because then God will set you as a gem in his crown. And he will brag about you all day long. You don't believe God brags on you? Look at Job chapter 1. Look at Job chapter 2. Complete boo-boo he was. And God says, there's none like him. I love him. He loves me. You love God? Maybe you feel like a complete boo-boo like I do sometimes. But God's so in love with you, he brags on you. Now, close your eyes for a minute and think about that very words that I told you. He's so in love with you, you're the only one like you in the world. All right, a couple of points and then we're done. We need to speak the truth in love to others. Can you say amen? That's something I have to work on because I'm, I'm a leader. The leaders say, get the broom, get the ladder, let's get this done now. And you go, where's your tenderness? Well, okay, let's do it this way. Let's say there's a big fire, okay? And I say fire, and that you don't like the way it sounds. What if I told you to straighten up your act, and you really need to, and I'll pray with you, and God will work with you, and you go, I don't like the way you're talking to me. Can you see how stupid that is? So listen, the Bible says don't even think you're something when you're nothing. Because when we start thinking we're something, we're going to set ourselves up. Every argument is because the person that starts it thinks they're something. Pastor Kerry, where'd you get all this stuff to share like this? Spending time with God like I'm trying to tell you. He's the only one can open your eyes to things that so relate to you, so make you so solid, make you so full of joy, and so strengthened within. He's the only one that can do it. I can give you words of encouragement, tell you the results, and pray for you and all that. But until you really get in there and you start becoming a buddy with God and really get in and start talking with God, you're just going to be religious. We don't want to do that. God loves us so much. So the real problem is us. I want to try to make it so it looks ridiculous. <laughs> Doesn't that look ridiculous? My daughter's probably watching, you know, and her husband down there. And gee, dad, kind of mellow out on that stuff. Anyway. So speak the truth in love with others. Look what Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 says this. 15 and 16, just two scriptures. It says, but speaking the truth in love. You may grow up in all things into him who is the head of all principality and power. From whom the whole body, all of us, joined and knit together by which every joint supplies. Him gives 10 bucks, somebody makes cookies, one straightens a chair, the other one vacuums, somebody parks. And all working together for the glory of God. Can you say amen? Nobody's position is any greater than that. Did you know I'm only in a position, an office? I'm not any better than any of you. Stop watching and putting people on pedestals and thinking they're better than you and all that kind of stuff. It's just foolishness. I don't think I am better than any of you. In fact, I have great respect for every one of you. And I don't have a problem with that because prideful people can't submit. They can't become friends because their pride is at stake. And pride cometh before 
destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God resists the proud, give grace to the humble. So the thing you need to do is humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So the first thing in the morning, you get humble, and God says, I'm going to lift you up and send you out in the day. Conquer. And that's what he does. You submit, God equips. You stand up, and God steps forward in you, and you step forward in him, and your day is already spoken for. Victory in Jesus my Savior forever. Amen? He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. All right, so now, by building each other up in the church and encourage each other with words and prayer, this is the all basis of God, how God can properly use our tongue. Second of all, we as his church family, we need to cause growth. So if your church is too small, invite members. Well, I don't know what they're going to say before I invite. Just invite them. They can say no. <laughs> but it's already a statistic. I don't know where I heard this from. I think it's YWAM, Youth with a Mission. They said the reason why most people don't come to church is they never have a proper invitation. A proper invitation. They might tell, you're going to go to hell if you don't come out. <laughs> Proper invitation. Can you meet with me at church? I'll buy you some coffee. Let's sit down. Pretty soon that's going to be a really nice little coffee house. We're going to have tables and all kinds of chairs and people will be able to sit and fellowship. This is a place where Christians come and be trained or learn and grow. This is not a church that you have to join. You join yourself to Jesus. You become a member that way, not of the church, but of God's body. Amen. Finally, one of my last scriptures is this. Go with me to Ecclesiastes. You ladies were in Ecclesiastes not too long ago in your Bible study. It was a nice little study, wasn't it? You didn't know you could get so much out of that. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. We're going to pick up a verse 1. I want you to listen. I'm reading out of a King James so it might read differently than your scripture. It says, walk prudently or uprightly when you go into the house of God. What? Okay, let me ask you, who's the church? We are. Where's the house of God? Any building, no, you're not the house of God. Your body is. But any building that houses the church of God is a house of God. Could be house of God over there, house of God over there. Doesn't matter. It's just a building. Say amen. But people gather corporately there. And where two or three gather in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So actually, the house of God is not something that, that's real important. But it's important enough because no house, you in the rain. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> we, we sought God whether we should rent a school or not when we first came. And God says, no, I got something better for you. So we, we make payments on this, and this will be ours. I'm not flushing them down the rental toilet. Can you say amen? $2,000 a month just to have church and a school. And you have to set up and tear down every time. Ooh, that's a lot of moo moo. Can you say Amen. But God directs our steps. Can you say amen? And he directs your steps too. Now, here. Walk prudently when you go into the house of God and draw near to hear. What? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to be. Draw near to hear rather than give the sacrifice of fools. Uh oh. For they do not know that they do evil. What's a sacrifice of a fool? words. Speaking things without thinking, babbling, gossiping, all that kind is foolish talk. Can you say amen? Now this is Ecclesiastes, this is Old Testament. Listen, two, do not be rash with your mouth. Do not let your heart utter anything hastily before God. I'm just an idiot. 
For God is in heaven and you're on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Someone say amen. amen. Okay. Listen, people that control their words, the Bible calls them, and our last scripture is going to say, you have reached maturity. Okay, so we'll read it to you later. So catch this now. I love this. Do not be rash with your mouth, for a dream comes through much activity. Listen to this. And a fool's voice is known by many words. How you doing? And then they uttered for half an hour everything they went through in the last 20 years. I still ran into somebody recently. Breaks my heart. This person was saved before me in the same group. Not Brother Cyrus, but the same group. And they have never learned to talk right. And their life is still the same mess it was 30 years ago. And I, my heart just breaks because God has better things. Can you say amen? You ask them how they're doing and they're gossiping about their husband and they're talking about this problem and Boeing's this problem and all that problem, bow problem, problem. And you, I, you, I feel like, stop! Have you gone to God with that? Oh yeah, but he doesn't listen. Okay, you got the picture. All right. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Whoa, there's an eye opener. How do we do that? Let me explain. Close your eyes, everybody. Work with me on this. Okay? We're going to use a little illustration. Okay? And it has to do with words, but I want you to see. You see in pictures. So if I say a word, you should have a picture that pops up. So if I say dog, how many got a picture? Now you all got a different dog, probably your favorite dog, whatever dog. But if I say black dog, now it narrows it down, doesn't it? There's poodles that are black, other dogs are black. There's, you know, all kinds of, you know, Labrador. And if I say a black Labrador dog, then I've narrowed it right down, didn't I? If I say a small and statue black Labrador, I even narrowed it down more. Now you know, open your eyes, look at me, how important words are when you're conversing and, and you're talking. Think about the Tower of Babel. Remember the story? Go back and refresh yourself. We, we know that they were all in such agreement and they decided they were going to build a tower to God. Now what you might not know is they were under Nimrod. Nimrod was an Ephilim. He was uh, about nine to ten feet tall. He was evil. And you either worship him or he ate you. So sometimes we need to figure out what's going on. So they built this tower to tell God they're better than him. Sounds like the devil says, he, I will send my throne above the most high. So he got all these people of one language, one mind, get them together, and man, they started building this huge skyscraper in Ur of the Chaldees, where Abraham came from. And God says, oh no. So he went down and he looked to see what they were doing. They were glorifying the devil with their one words and their one language. anti god totally self, we're going to be like God. Same lie. And what did God do? He confused their languages and he made every language, the people not being able to talk to each other. So how many have, say the word Bible? Bible. How many know if you go down to uh, Mexico, they use uh, Biblos. If you go down into Africa, they have another name for it. That's what happened. We could be looking at the same stick. You could call that a stick. And I'll call it in my new language that I don't understand yet. Yeah, no, this is a stick. No, it's a hippity And And you see the division that comes through that? Satan's a master to getting us at odds with each other, with all other humans turning one against another. So he feeds off the anger and the strife and the wars and the rumors of wars. When you get frustrated, he feeds off of that and turns it on us. So we need to really watch our words, huh? 
And look at that big mess, and look at how it's made a mess all the way up into the present day. There's only one thing that unifies you and I. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And one thing that also unifies us, we're all headed to the same place, heaven. Amen. So we should not think it petty of ourselves to argue with one another. Or for that matter, for anybody, unless they're going to take your house, they're going to take your family or something, when that gives you right. But if somebody calls you a name, don't call them a name back. Smile and say, hey, that's a key win. Do something odd that freak them out. People that really show a vileness towards me, I usually buy them a gift. And I deliver it to them personally. <laughs> Why? Because really, they're, they need to be rescued. They're being stupid. And if I know that they're being stupid, and I love them and care about them, no matter how mad they are at me, then I'm going to take the higher road, and I'm going to help them. Now, Scott, you've known me a long time, and Piggy, you've known me a long time, and there's other people that know me a long time over years. Have you, I know I've done a few stupid things, but really most of my life is about helping others, right? And yours too. So keep your foot when you go in the house of God. <laughs> Our words can literally cause us to come into clarity or can cause confusion around us. The scripture says we are snared by the words of our mouth, Proverbs 6, 2. Don't vow a vow if you can't keep it. Lord, I promise you I'm going to fast twice as much tomorrow. And then you don't. Here's what God rather you do. He'd rather you not vow a vow at all and just let him give you what to do. Don't make promises to God. In fact, some of you are suffering because you've made a promise to God and haven't been able to keep it. Don't do that. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they swear by the temple, swear by their mother and father and their grave. They would have to say, yes, and, and this and that. They always have to bring something in because they couldn't trust themselves. But you and I are not that way. Can you say Amen. The scripture says we are snared by the words of our mouth, but there's power in our tongue. And God says, I've set before you life and death. Therefore, you choose life that you and your offspring or descendants may live. Say amen. Two fountains. Which one are you going to shut off? You're not going to make a hot tub over a cesspool, are you? Okay. Okay. Then finally, be good, be a good listener, because good listeners use words properly. Oh, that person's really quiet. You ever notice that? And they're the one who gets a cake first and a few other things because they're thought to be real. <laughs> and they probably are. Contemplating people that think about things before they went and dash into some. Can you say amen? Listen to what Proverbs chapter 10 says. 19 through 21. In a multitude, multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is like choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many people. But fools die because they lack wisdom. Wow. Have we ever heard the term... We talk too much. We might take a double check on that. <laughs> Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth slippeth. Speaking what God says in his word and talking in line with God's word give you plenty opening for everything without cursing yourself along the way. Say amen, somebody. Words paint the right picture. Dog. Black dog. Black Labrador dog. Black small Labrador dog. God says, you're blessed coming in, blessed going out. He didn't say, well, I'll see if I can bless you going in. You see? And that's how we view it. We, how about this one? Folks, certain people, and this is probably something you probably need to hear. Certain people think, 
that everybody does it the way they do. So when somebody does something and it's kind of like what they normally do, but it's not right, they think they're doing the same thing. So if you lie just a little bit, then everybody lies just a little bit. So you don't know who to believe. See the lie of the devil in that? Oh, are you with me? I like to help you with your personal walk as well. You know? Amen. I know that here's one we all fall wide. We, we want, some people are so good at loving and serving. If they're not careful, they'll think that why isn't everybody else loving and serving like that? And they can pick up resentment. Come on, don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. So listen, don't look at others the way you are. Look at others through love. And love doesn't even notice when others do it incorrectly. Of course, unless, you know, they borrowed your car and they left it a mess. <laughs> Then there's another scenario for that. No, I'm just joking with you. Okay. Can I have fun with you? Yeah. I mean, I haven't had such great fun since last Sunday. All right. Now, speaking what God says, say amen. Death and life are in the power of the what? All right. So let me read some scriptures and we're finished. Okay. Proverbs. Okay. 13.2 says, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens his, his wide his lips shall have destruction. Hello. Proverbs 14.3 says, in the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Isn't that great? Proverbs 17.28 even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he's considered perceptive. I got kicked out of the first church I went to visit after I was trained because our pastor trained us with answers. I don't know what, when I ask a pastor, hey, blah, 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 and they go, I don't really know. That's scary. How long have you been in the ministry? And how long, how, this is what I like to ask him. How much did that cost you to go to school? And you don't know that much? Interesting thought. So what I'm saying is, you're all in school. Whether you're paid for or not, it's called the school of hard knocks for some and the school of this Holy Spirit for others. Today, which part of the school are you in? Well, I got up in God, then you're in the Holy Spirit school. You got up in yourself, then you're in the flesh school. You need to repeat the grade. Ouch. Moving right along. How to direct your life in Christ. Say, I'd like to know. All right. This is it. My brethren, let not many of you try to become a teacher, knowing that we who teach receive a stricter judgment. For we are all stumble in many things. So don't be trying to do so many things. Some people try to do too many things and they never finish anything. Hello. Do one or two, three things well. Amen. Don't, you'll be known for doing things well instead of leaving things a mess. We are going to leave something behind, aren't we? On my tombstone, you know what I want? He loved people and he changed as many lives as he could. I don't want it to say, and all he left us was a stain. <laughs> Come on, some of you already thought about it. You're already past the half year life. Come on, what are you doing? Still acting like you had no responsibility? <laughs> Listen, for we stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a mature man able to control the guidance system of his whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. We turn their whole body around. They're bigger than us. Look at the ships, although they are so large 
and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a little small rudder, whatsoever the pilot desires it to be. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it is what's directing your life. How you doing? Oh, pretty good under the circumstances. Well, my pastor used to say this. What are you doing under them? Man, today has been one of those days. You know, don't, don't talk like that. You can stop. You, you, you want to say, Ooh, I'd like to tell you what I really been experienced. But don't. It's not that important. Because sometimes the devil will gig you a little and then watch how you respond. And if you go, ah, you blah, 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 he goes, oh, we're going to do that again. I poked that person there. and Look what all the mess they made, all the negative. That, let's keep poking them there. You want to know why our president and situation got so troubled? You want to know why our media is so corrupt? Because they know if you hear it long enough, you'll believe it because you're a ding dong. That's exactly what they're doing to us. They're trying to brainwash us. Now, the people that are doing it is the devil's doing it. The people are too dumb to know what it is. Now, I am on camera, and I don't mind sharing this. It's a complete scenario that you know does not make any sense. It literally says good is evil and evil is good. Justifies killing innocent babies. Now, if you don't know that abortion is a satanic sacrifice of spilling blood to the devil who thinks he's in control of this world. Now, whether you agree with it or not, but there's only a few nations in this world that are any worth of anything as far as excelling. The United States, Russia, China, Europe, certain ones excel. You notice that? So Satan knows immediately, I better corrupt those nations that are excelling. And don't you think he has America on his target? Satan hates people with influence. So if you're a good looking person, male or female, he's going to try to corrupt you. If you're somebody that has money, you're going to get a special little spook assigned to you. They're going to try to rip you off. So you need to be wise about that. I'm just telling you what happens. People who are in offices where authority, such as myself, where I influence more than one or two people, Satan, don't you think he bothers me? So the wisdom in this is that Jesus does our fighting for us. We do what we are supposed to do, meet with God. He preps us for the day. We don't have to worry about what that turkey's doing. Hello? We shouldn't put our eyes or repeat what he's doing so much. But we should not be ignorant enough to not figure out his devices or how he counters attack. You have armor, folks. That armor is on you so when you punch the devil's lights out, when he comes back around to counterattack you, you're protected. Amen. It's the counterattack that gets you, not the initial attack. Amen. And that's what you're suffering from, brother. A counterattacks. You have pushed and got people saved. You think the devil's going to leave you alone? So you got to get on your face for hours and get God to break that off of you. That's the only way you're going to do it. Otherwise, we're going to continue to have those problems. God is the only one who can break us free. All right, finishing. See how great the little member can start a forest fire. Folks, how many know that Scripture says our tongue can actually cause the fires of hell to burn? So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but let me, let me tell you. If the Bible says that they're like bits on horse's mouth, like, like a reins and a horse, or like a rudder for a ship... Your tongue will steer you either into victory or into trouble. Amen? You could either end up on the beach like that big tanker did because the guy was drunk. Or you can end up in the arms of the Lord every day. This. 
is the key. Well, how you doing, everybody? Breast. I'm blessed. Coming in, I'm blessed. Boy, I tell you what, you see how slow it was for you to answer? Not, that was not good. Because Satan does listen to my sermons, folks. And, and, and I don't need to ask you, and this is not a brag, but guaranteed Satan fought, fights you coming here and trouble this, a little thing, and you see you're this and you're that. Why do you think that happens? Satan's never going to get in the way from you going to a dead church or going to do something else. Amen. Hello? But he will fight you tooth and nail to keep you from coming to a church like this or another one that's like this. And there's lots of them. They usually never get huge because most people quit on it when God's saying, hey, uh, let's work on that. I've never heard that before. I've been a Christian 40 years. You know, all right. And finishing. So if you can light a forest fire with your tongue, then you can direct total victory with it also. So how you doing? I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. What I do because God does it through me, I'm blessed what I touch. I'm really blessed in what I say. Because I let God give me the words on the way. When I sing a song, it's a song of joy. Amen. It's not a song of sorrow and a ploy. So I would love for you to go with God now after we've heard something like this and say, God, begin to teach me how to speak. Give me checks and balances when I'm talking too negatively. And completely warn me when I'm about to shut the door on something that you want to open to me. Can you do that? Sure you can. Say I'm a champion. Thank you for telling me about me. Amen. And me too. All right. So think about it. You got saved by your mouth and the words you spoke. You will be preserved by the words of your mouth and the words you speak. You'll be whole and healed by the words you speak. Why? Because if we speak out of our spirit, who lives in here? And if we speak God, we're sowing, aren't we? If we speak God, we're sowing. And if we sow, then we? If we're sowing God, we're reaping. If we're sowing problems, we're reaping. If we're thinking of ourselves, we're reaping. You got it. So here's what I don't want you to do. Everyone go. Phew. Do not correct other people's conversations. First thing you find yourself doing is saying, hey, that was negative. Stop doing that. Don't do that. Your job is not to correct somebody else's negativity. Your job is to go to God about yours and have God straighten you. Can you say amen? So if somebody says something way off the wall and it's negative, don't take it upon yourself to correct them. Because it's like grabbing a dog by the throat. You're going to get bit. Because that person didn't ask you to correct them. So Satan uses the correction part. So don't do that part. Do the part of remembering that God is working with you, making you a champion, and he's going to talk, teach you how to talk. Can you say amen? Now, some of you are older than I am, so you should know how to talk by now. And me too, but Satan's a master to messing our words up. That's just killing me. Boy, I tell you, the other day, I, I was so sorry. I said this to somebody. I said, you are killing me, man. Think of that. I had a boss at work a long time ago. That's all he would say all day long. He ended up dying of a heart attack. Now, I'm not saying that was what killed him, but he was a stressed out dude. All right? So listen, God bless you. God keep you. Let his face shine upon you. May you, when you wake up in the morning, that he becomes the first that you begin to think about and begin to talk to. May he order your steps because you're righteous. You have the righteous one inside of you. 
And may he fill your heart with good things. So when you open them, you're an encourager. You're just like speaking silver and gold little amulets that blesses other people that hear. And may God enrich you with wisdom and knowledge and remove the scales from your, your eyes so that you may see the simplicity that is in the gospel of Christ. God bless you. Have a great day.